here in Dover, Pennsylvania. We're so glad that you uh, made the drive out to uh, join us this evening. I know it's a gorgeous evening outside, but you chose to come here and worship God. Well, uh, just know that uh, God will honor you uh, for that, definitely. I'd like to um, share a testimony, if I may. Um, for the past month, I've been meaning to call a dear sister of mine named Kathleen to talk about uh, a Bible study at her house, but I just never really got around to doing it. Well, yesterday, around 5.30 in the evening, I was getting ready to go out, and then it just happened to cross my mind to give her a call. Well, I decided, okay, well, I better do it now. So I called her up, and I should say, this is the very first time I ever called her. I said, hi, Kathleen. That's Mike Ganaway. And as soon as I introduced myself, she said to me, do you know what's been going on with me? This, do you know what's been going on with me? And I said, uh, no, what's been going on with you? And then she said that uh, a month earlier, her, uh, her daughter-in-law drowned, thus leaving her son widowed. And then she proceeded to pour out uh, everything that's been going on in her family all over the past month. And I just sat there and I, I listened. And I prayed with her at the end. And then she said to me, thank you so much for calling. It really, it really lifted my spirits. And I just felt kind of guilty upon hearing that because I was calling to talk about something else. But... It just goes to show, uh, whenever you get some kind of inkling to give someone a call, don't ignore that. Don't ignore that at all, because that just may be the Holy Spirit uh, wanting to use you to lift up someone's spirits. Who knows, you might even save a life just uh, by giving them a call. Amen? Amen. Okay. Well, um, anyway, this is uh, Upper Room Ministries, our Sunday evening service. Uh, we're here uh, every Sunday. Uh, starting at 4.30 for Sunday school, 5 o'clock for prayer, and 6 o'clock for our uh, main message brought to us by the Holy Ghost. Uh, we also gather uh, on the last uh, Thursday of every month, uh, starting at 7, where we uh, have a special guest speaker, as well as every Tuesday at the Old Country Buffet, starting at 7 o'clock for the Bible study. If you'd like to uh, come early and have supper with us, uh, by all means do so. Uh, we usually start arriving around uh, 5.30 in the evening. Just remember, you can't take any food into, uh, the, meeting, into the meeting room. Uh, we are seen locally on uh, Comcast uh, 16, uh, the White Rose Network. Uh, at 8.30 in the morning, 8.30 on Sunday mornings for the Sunday School broadcast, and 8 o'clock Sunday evenings uh, for the uh, main message broadcast. Uh, we're also seen on uh, the Bright Star Network in Pakistan three times a week. This is the highest uh, rated uh, show on the Bright Star Network. At last count, we were reaching about 42 million people as uh, definitely an act of God. Amen to that. And uh, we thank everyone who uh, for your support, because without your support, we couldn't broadcast in Pakistan, nor could we broadcast uh, here locally. Okay. Well, at the, this time, we shall uh, now uh, collect the offering. Um, please place um, whatever offering you wish to give in this basket. Uh, we also have a uh, missions missions uh, jug back there, which we want to fill. Uh, if you have a gift of spare change, uh, by all means, drop it in there. You can drop bills in there also. Uh, just to know, so you know, uh, every offering uh, that you give to this gift of God through this ministry will go uh, right back to uh, doing the work of God. Uh, nobody receives any salaries here. Uh, every every uh, act of labor here is entirely voluntary. Thank you. So somebody say, I've had a real good week. Say so the devil's been trying to work me over, and that's a real good sign.
church last night in Harrisburg. There's a couple of uh, women from the Philippines and some other people. One of them was going to fill the Holy Ghost. I don't know about the other one that fell on the floor. Did she get filled with the Holy Ghost or not? But uh, anyways, how many know God's doing great work? Yes, Amen. he is. Amen. I want to say something tonight here. First of all, I'm awful proud of you. Brother John's going to be preaching tonight because Brother John now is going to be stepping in. Well, Brother John's just a member, but he's ahead. Uh, he's going to be stepping in as assistant pastor. And how many of you know if you join the army, you got to be in one degree? Amen. Amen. They say we're going right. You say, well, I'm going left or I'm not going. You're court martial. But I know Brother John, after all these years, he has the same standards, the same message that I've had all these years. I'll say one thing about this, the church. It might be small, but we're growing. We're solid. Somebody asked me last night, he said, can I talk to you, a certain man? I said, yes. He said, what is your goal? What, what, if you had money and you could have your own place or do whatever, what is your goal? What, what is your vision? I said, well, first of all, I want to tell you something. Our vision is John 3, 16. Let me know what that is. Amen. I said, the second thing is to get into the Holy Holy Spirit, glory to God. He said, what else is your vision? I said, to have a place that's our own. That's going to be a world studio for all the world. It's going to have enough room for congregation to come. But I'm not so much worried about the congregation of America. That sounds mean. Because America is too blessed. America don't need God. So I'm say amen. amen. When all hell breaks loose, America's going to need, need God. And that's where you and I and this great mighty army comes in. But how many of you know you've got to be faithful? When you study in the book of James, when you're having a good turn out there, uh, Bible study. The book of James says that if a man's unstable in all his ways, he's like to be able to see tossed to and fro. He goes up and down there and that. He said, let that man not, let that man think, let that man think God that he received what from the Lord? Anything. Anything. He said, if he's unstable in all his ways, he's not getting nothing from the Lord. How many of you know? In? All right. You've got this excuse, you've got that excuse. Well, I can't come because I married a woman. I can't come because I have a yoke of office. I can't come because... How many of you know? Excuse is just nothing but a lie. Well, why don't the person just say, I just don't want to be there? And I don't have time to play babysitting games. So I told this guy that. I said, I'm not babysitting games. I said, if you want to run with the Lord and run with the big dogs, get settled. If not, just keep on going. And I don't have no position for somebody that's going to be up and down. They're in the night. They're in the night. But thank God we have people here that are solid. Brother Jason is starting to show his colors, that he is a mighty man of God, faithful and so forth. And in a couple of weeks, if uh, he wants to, we're going to ordain him as an elder. Somebody say amen. amen. But the word elder actually means, the early church said to be an elder you had to be 30 years old. But I, I look at it this way here. You can be 30 years old in the Lord. Somebody else can be 50 years old and I'll be 10 years old in the Lord. I, I want somebody that's been around for a while. Been up and down, knows what to talk about. And we, we're, what we're doing, we're building a foundation, a strong foundation. Hello, somebody say amen. If we don't have a strong strong foundation, we don't have nothing. God's been blessing us. He's been paying our bills. Thank your sister back there after all these years supporting uh, uh, Pakistan. Thank thank God for all you supporting whatever you're supporting. And uh, I'm thinking about going back on radio. Because I've been on radio for many years all over the, all over the United States. How many of you know we're getting ready for a great move of God? Yes. We was in that church there last night, that, that great big fancy motel. That was a very new big fancy place. Man, that was something else. But how many of you know there's the people out there that wants God's touch? So I say, and there would come time to pray. Guess what I did? I turned and I walked away. 
I said, Brother John, let's go. How many know I'm doing my part? When we start this thing off right, we're going to have it. We're going to do it right. Every Sunday, for Sunday every month, remember, wow. Somebody say amen. Amen. When people want to be part of wow, they got to, I mean, stand up. Give the devil a black eye. The next Sunday, then, is Brother John, Pastor John. He'll, he'll preach. Somebody say amen. So we're, we're going to have a good time. We're, we're going to let the Lord have His way. And every one of us is going to do our part. So we say, man. But how many of you know, I can talk about Brother John being a military man. You, you can't miss a, miss a service. If you, if you, remember the comes, uh, Sister Tracy, she was in, uh, I think, the Marines. But how many of you know, when I was in, Five o'clock with Reverend. That trumpet blowed and you didn't show up there and your Reverend, uh, what do you call Brother John? You had front in the morning. Roll call. Formation. Huh? Formation. Yeah. If you wasn't there, you're AWOL. You're going to get a discharge or probably kicked out of the arm. <laughs> How many of you know a lot of people miss what God's doing? Amen. Say amen. I want you all to remember, don't look at this as Brother Humphrey's work. This is not Brother Humphrey's work. This is God's work. It's your work. Somebody say amen. Yes, amen. A couple weeks here, I guess we'll be going back to Pittsburgh to preach over. But I'm able to turn this church over to every, every one of you. I, I, I sit back there and listen to Brother Michael teach. I'm telling you what, he's starting to explode. Yes, amen. Somebody say amen. I mean, he, he's, He's getting excited. I, I don't think he's going to be able to sit and teach too long. I think he's going to have to get up and dance a little bit. Somebody say amen. He feels that anointing. Somebody say amen. 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 My wife said, Brother John does a good job uh, preaching and teaching. I said he's going to do a whole lot better as he get, has to get up every, sun, every uh, Sunday and get up and preach. Somebody say amen. amen. How many of you know we want to hear what God has for us. Somebody say amen. amen. So get ready. Somebody say, I'm going to get ready. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going to get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Amen. amen. So I'm actually here what Brother John has to say by the Spirit of God. Amen. And I encourage each and every one of you, whatever you do for the Lord, do with all your might. That's what the Bible says. Brother John said, I'm not ready, but I guess I have to be ready. How many of you know that's where we are? I was going to be in season, in season, out of season. So, Johnny, come quick to Pamela. It's just in your quarter, under the ball. So, I'm yeah. proud of y'all. I'm proud of y'all. Sister Jackson, she's, she's just got herself running silly. Sister Marissa, she, she's something. They're hooked up. I don't know where they are tonight, but they're, they're probably so late night because after service, I think they had all night prayer meeting. Uh, I don't know what's going on. But how many of you know we're working together? So I'm going to say amen. So I'm anxious. So would you give a great big hand for Pastor John? Pastor John, come on up. So I'm going to say amen. Yay. And I want you to do something, too. A lot of times I see and hear people in church call the pastor by the first name. That's dishonor to them. You call him pastor. And you don't have to call me pastor because I don't want you to call me pastor. I don't know what I am. Your brother. Your that. brother, that's right. You call me brother. But call him pastor. And I want you to understand that uh, if you have a problem, don't come to me. Go to him first. And he'll send it through Sister Joan. If it's important, it'll get back to me. And how many of you are going to do it like, like uh, Moses? You have to put 70 hours. So we say amen. So we're, we're going to be working for the Lord. I suppose we bring a couple of people along tonight, but I don't know what happened to the telephone. It's not getting through. But how many of you know we go start compelling? Give Pastor John a great big hand. You want this mic? Yeah, okay. I got 
told the pastor or said to the pastor, Brother Jim, are we ready to do what God wants us to do? Amen. Uh, he talks about blind, blind faith. This is part of Ooh. the blind faith. We don't know where we're going. And we don't know where we're headed if we're following Christ. It's not our ways, it's His ways. Whether we like it or not, it's the only way we're going to make it into heaven. It's going by His rules, by His regulations, by what He wants, not what we want. This tonight, when I'm talking about, what we'll be talking about, was given to me. When I was battling the question, when he, Jim came to me in January and wanted me to be assistant to him. Did I really want to do it? No, because it takes commitment. It takes a walk. It takes a walk in the Lord. It takes standing up and people have to look up to you. This was hard for me because I wanted to do what God wanted to do. But I wanted to do what I wanted to do and not what God wanted to do. This is why I'm saying it's blind faith. When you follow Christ, you have no idea where you're starting from and you have no idea where you're going. Amen. You know, you have to totally depend on Jesus Christ yeah. as your personal Savior, your guide, and your source. Mm -hmm. And this was part of the battle. I'm a little bit like Jim in a lot of areas, but there's some that really rocked my boot. There's one I was praying about which way I should go, what I should do. I looked out the bathroom window one day and came right through me. It's not always what you want. Well, I thought that answered the question, but it didn't. I just put a bigger question mark in my life. What do you mean by that, Lord? The door was shut. He never said nothing. He still hasn't said nothing. And I was reading one time says in his word that you go by faith, not by sight. And that's blind faith. When Jesus was on the Mount of Olives and the apostles were with him, we'll be going to Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. The apostles were asking him questions. And this is one of the parables that Jesus was telling the apostles. Now what a parable is, is it simply a story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson that's to compare something with. In other words, we're going to be talking about the talents. Okay, the five talents and the two talents and then the one talent. The spiritual side of it is the kingdom of God, the gifts. What has God given you? What gifts are you using? What gift are you sitting on and not worrying about walking in Christ and doing what He wants you to do, but you're doing what you want to do? God has rules and regulations just like we have rules and regulations down here. Why? To keep us in focus, to keep us out of trouble so we don't go in a pitfall and pay the rest of our life for something that we've done years ago. But to keep us away from that stuff in order for us to walk the right walk in Him. And for also for Him to grow, uh, also for us to grow closer to Him, to depend more upon Him, to love Him, to walk with Him, to be guided by Him, to be directed by Him. And this is just one of them. It says, 
For the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and departed, or delivered unto them his goods. Okay, so this man was walking, getting ready to leave to a far country, and then he, he got three servants. And what he did is, okay, I'm going to give you all my goods, but it's going to be certain ones that I give you. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to another man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. What he's saying is that he gave one guy five talents that is made and gone according to his own ability. Each man has a different ability. Okay, and this is what we're going to talk about. The abilities that God gives us, we have to build up. We have to add to. And not just be like the one and not do nothing with it. Just sit on it. Because if you sit on it, you're going to lose it. But if you add to it, he's going to keep adding more and more and more. Unto one he gave five talents, to another two, unto another one. This is verse 15. According to the several ability and straightway, he took his journey. Okay, verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded the same and made them other five talents. So that's a hundred percent interest. So he's been he's been gone a while. Okay. And likewise, verse 17. He had received two, he also gained another two. Verse 18, And he that received one went and dug in the earth and hid his Lord's money. This is where a question came up to me is, why did he say the Lord's money? Why did they say the kingdom of heaven in verse 14? Because of spiritual side. God gives you a talent, use it. This guy, he gave one of five talents. In the monetary value, it was over $145,000 back in that day. That's a lot of money. Okay. But on the spiritual side, we use that in order to glorify God. And then after that, we have to, and when we keep going there and he finds us faithful in that, he adds to it. So he got a hundredfold on his blessings, on his uh, goods, talents. And then the one that had two talents, he received twice the amount that he had. He also received a hundred percent. But he that had received, verse 18, but he that had received one went and dug digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Now here's one that didn't invest it. He didn't do anything with it. He dug a hole, put it in, covered it up. This is what some people do. I was one of them to a point. And I learned from it. In verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants come and reckoned with him. Okay, so the Lord came back to those servants that he left, gave the money to, and he compared accounts. He opened the book, he turned around and said, okay, I gave you so much. Okay. So verse 20. And so he called and received the five talents, came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I ha have gained beside them five talents more. 100%. That's good. And it, here's what his Lord said to him in verse 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. 
might be the uh, words we want to hear from Christ when we stand before Him on Judgment Day. I know we all do, but are we? Just because we're a Christian, just because He gives us gifts and we don't use them doesn't mean we're getting into heaven. It's more to that. Now, I believe if, if you give your heart to the Lord and you're a babe in Christ and you die or something happens, I'm sure, you know, God's a righteous judge. If God wouldn't have appointed Jesus as a judge and he didn't think he could fulfill that, he wouldn't have never gave it to him. But they're all in one. They're all in one accord. They all know what they're doing. Verse 22. He also, also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. And his gain worth, his two talents were 58,000, over 58,000, and his income back was over $116,000. That's quite a reward. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast fulfilled faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So, even though he had a couple more less talents than the one that had five, he still made it in. Why? Because he, he added to it. He doubled it. He worked with it. He did what God wanted, what his Lord wanted him to do. Okay, verse 24. Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathered where thou hast not strawed or scattered or spread. Verse 25 says, And I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the earth, so lo, there hast that is thine. He was afraid. He was fearful. A lot of us are fearful to stand up for the Lord or go do things that He wants, that God wants us to do. Welcome. This is Sister Joan, Secretary for Upper Room Ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray, lay hands on you and your need and expect signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. Starting today, you will never be the same. If you would like to schedule a speaking engagement, contact our ministry. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen.